share with me what really uh, ignites your passion? You see, I see potential. I see everything as what might happen instead of what is. I see a person in their life and say, what's inside them? I know what's inside me. I know the little boy inside me. I know that frustration. I know that, that aspiration. I know that desire. I know that all those feelings when you just want to be more than you are and the world and things that happen tell you you can't be. Yeah. And I've just got this mega mission that says you can be. And, it, and this time around he made me to just open people up. Yeah. I love to, I love people enough to just say, come on. Yeah. It, you see that block that, that you think's in the way? It's not really a block. It's not really in the way. Let's, let's do a number of things together to take that out and to reposition the mind. And let's look at what you have done and what you've, you've sort of downplayed. Let's not downplay it. And just fire people up. Yeah. And so, so often uh, people end up at a, at a crossroads in their life. Uh, through no fault of their own. They're there, but they don't want to be there. And so often when you're, when you're worried about that, you lose a lot of confidence. You, you forget the good things that you've done, all the achievements that you've, uh, you, you've had over, over your life, and the, uh, the, those moments of, of glory and those moments where you've really achieved things. And people forget the good things when their focus is taken away on the day-to-day -day and the getting things done as well. A lot of people sort of have asked me, why did I start out on this path of coaching, t t you know, growing businesses, teaching, training? And, um, and you know, I, I, I came, when I came back to the UK, I was living in Spain for a while, and when I came back to the UK around the turn of the century, that's this one, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, sort of 99, 2000, I'd set up a business, and it was, I just... I'd come back with no massive resources and I'd set up this business and I'd put my heart into it. I passionately, passionately loved my business. And it was a fledgling business, it was doing sort of nightclub trips and what have you. But it's irrelevant to what it was. When I went out looking for help into the business community, you know, if I hadn't got a big checkbook to go to a marketing course and, and all the people that were offering help, they'd, you know, I'd come from a background of, uh, of treading the boards, if you like, and I didn't sort of get inspired by anyone even though they were offering courses and money. To cut a long story short, I, I still get upset talking about it now. I, I had to then make a decision one day. I wasn't really making enough money. I wasn't really making any money. And, um, and I couldn't honorably carry on doing that because my, my wife was working and I wasn't contributing. And I felt dishonorable, really. And um, I had to stop following my heart in that business and I remember whew, still makes me cry I remember taking those boxes into the skip just getting rid of so much that I'd put my heart and soul into and I remember that day still makes me cry I remember that day swearing and I didn't want anyone else to go through that pain and that it's so horrible, you know. When you yeah. put your heart and soul into a business, yeah. you talk about when life dumps on you or different journeys, they're never, it's never the end. It just feels like it at the time. I cried and I felt lost. I felt empty. I felt worthless. Just, I didn't, I had for two or three years, just I was like, no value. Because it was a real kicking. Um, I know there's value in that because it put me on this path. And I know that somebody out there right now is in that state. Yeah. They need help. Yeah. And that's my mission. Yeah. And so often when you're in that position, you don't know, you, you don't feel able to ask for help. You, you don't feel, because you... No, you just feel lost and, yeah. and worthless and foolish. And, you know, you're sitting there and I'm, I'm a proud man, as everybody, and I was talented, and, I, and I, as everybody is in their own way. And... And I'm like, how can this happen to Ben? And how do I face the world? How do, how do I raise my head up? And I'm so full of shame. Uh, j just, wow, mixed emotions and pain and arguments in the house. And uh, yeah, don't ever, you know, yeah. I just, but it just, I'm glad, yeah, because 
I'm on a better path for yeah. it, and I've learned so much more. And and it's about it. love. It's about helping someone not go through that pain. Yeah. There is, you know, right now as we sit and talk, there's somebody in a small business in in Portsmouth or Aberdeen, and they're going through that same. They they're having the arguments. They're stressing over family bills. That's probably a frustration being taken out on the children who's have got. It's, it's it's such a such a um, a terrible place to be. Yeah, it is. But um, I'm a, I'm a believer that nothing happens without a reason. Yeah. And um, it's it's never what happens that's the problem. It's what you do about Always, it. Always, isn't it? Yeah. You know? and, but but also more importantly, what you think about it. And that's something that uh, that you've managed to uh, to gain great insights in is to to to, to help the way you think about any given situation. Yeah. Because, I mean, that, that is the, and that's part of what I try to teach so much of it. It's this conscious awareness rather than just unconscious drifting. You see, if you look at a set of circumstances and say, I didn't like the way that happened, and why did it happen, and what have I learned from it, and how can I stop it happening again, and, you know, raise above it, beyond the emotion, and analyse, not overanalyse, not death by analysis, but just conscious awareness, it does at least should make you a better person. You know, if we repeat patterns, we've got a lesson to learn. Yeah. You can go through broken relationship, broken relationship, broken relationship, and you, the world teaches you to point the finger outside. You can say, you know, it's not my fault, they were this and they were this and they were this. But you know, the, the universe is trying to teach us is you're getting, you're getting, we get presented mm -hmm. a, a mirror. Yeah. What we see, we know we blame someone for being selfish because we're selfish. We blame someone for being tight, it's because we're tight. We blame someone, it's because we need to learn that lesson. Yeah. But, but so often we don't, we just keep blaming. And this culture we have of, of who's to blame and who can I sue, it's so, so wrong because the most powerful thing we can do is we can look inside and say, yeah. okay, how, how come I keep getting this? Where's my lesson? Maybe, maybe in me there's that. Yeah. And they say when you, when you point the finger, Three point back, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's, that's, that's so true. But because you've been through uh, a lot of pain and a lot of rediscovery, what you've learnt as a result of all that has been absolutely invaluable. Yeah, priceless, priceless. But, th but you know, it, it's almost more than what you've learned, it's, it's the shift of where you end up. It's just, wow. You know, I know many nights crying, many nights without money. And I know those pressures of being like you want to do, you can see a way out, but you can't afford the way out. You can see some actions you can take, but you know, actually you can't even put petrol in the car. And, um, but yeah, then when you stand back from that and you go through it and you're like, well, that's changed my, I'm going to look at other people a different way now. I'm not going to be so arrogant because they, they may be suffering. You know, and, and you might bump into somebody on a, just in a coffee shop, and they're short-tempered. And it's easy to judge and say, you know, oh, you miserable git. Or, or we're on a train and there's, I remind myself, you know, constantly of a story when, I think it was Stephen Covey. Um, you're on a train and there's two boys going crazy, causing a disturbance and annoying the other passengers. And the man who's with them seems to be sort of not bothered. Everybody's interpretation is that he's a sloppy parent, the boys are unruly. And one of them on the train sort of says, excuse me, sir, but do you mind controlling your children? And he sort of wakes up from his daydream and says, I'm sorry, they've just lost their mother. And it's, you know, you imagine if you were the person yes. that asked that question. Yeah. But we never consider what might be behind we see somebody and say, why are they like that? And actually there could be so much that, that we don't know. Yeah. And if you can have that awareness to look at people as the whole, not the yeah. vision, yeah. it's powerful. Yeah. And um, just uh, being aware of, um, of the whole person that you're, you're, uh, you're dealing with, not just yeah. the, um, the, the narrow context that yeah. you might be in. Yeah. They're not stroppy. They've had a bad day. Or they're stressed. Why? They're not useless. What's gone wrong in their life? Yeah. And usually, you know, what's f what I've discovered, which is not a discovery, 
It's just me getting away. Yeah. Love. People are angry because of somewhere where they're treated badly. But if they'd been treated with love, they wouldn't be angry. People are bitter that day, short-tempered that day, because something's gone wrong. Why did it go wrong? Because someone didn't show him any kindness. Mm -hmm. And actually, in my own humble way, I think if we've got to spread love, spread kindness, mm -hmm. you can, people, people aren't nasty. And also giving them, the, giving them permission to, to, um, to think in a, in a broader way rather than the, um, the very focused way. We, we are all so busy in our lives, we've, we've, all, got, we've all got pressures, we've all got um, things that we need to achieve, things that are going well, things that are not going well. And it's easy to, um, to be coloured by all of that noise that's happening around you and to forget uh, to, to just look at people uh, in, in, a, uh, uh, in an open way rather than in a closed way. Yeah, it's the not prejudging. Yeah. Don't judge. I know we do, but the book by the cover, mm -hmm. you know, yes, you should because it makes it attractive. But you know, if you see something that's on the surface, it does, it doesn't mean to, you know. I always use the analogy of a beautiful lake, a beautiful blue, shiny lake surface on a sunny day, and you think, oh, I'm really hot, I'm gonna dive in there. Poof, boy, those waters don't look. Yeah, they look inviting, <laughs> but they are sure they are deadly and cold often. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they look inviting and, and refreshing. So, you know, um, it's, that, it's that look in, not at. Yeah. You've been able to create a philosophy of, of your own, um, which you are using to great effect to help others to, uh, to, to live a more enlightened and, and I hope so, yes. life. What were your influences? Um, probably... I, I, I subscribe at least to the belief that we, our journey is not an accident. Mm. I subscribe to the fact that we're here to learn something and we'll keep learning it until mm. we get it. Um, so if I look at my life, I was brought up as Jehovah's Witness. Oh. Now that was a very influential childhood, but my parents split up when I was nine or ten and that was a very influential childhood. Mm. <laughs> and then I was in various roles um, as a teenager and you know, exploring sales and 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 probably not conforming to rules mm -hmm. and finding my own way. Um, and every step I can now look at with a different set of eyes and say, well, I learned that there and I learned that there. Mm -hmm. And become a conscious learner means that going forward I'm able to see lessons before I learn painful lessons. And I think that's been hugely powerful. But, it, but influences... Um, you know, having children, I, c I can promise you that the singularly biggest impact in my life is being a dad. Because it taught, and I, I'm, you know, any parent, you suddenly get this bundle that says, feed me, look after me, and I, don't, I can't give you anything back. <laughs> but they do, of course, so much. Yeah. But if you don't give that time and attention to a child, they're actually a pain. All they want is attention. And so many times I see children, oh, go over there, turn the telly on. Oh, man, it gets me angry. Because children are so beautiful if you give them attention and then they soak it all up and they learn. You know, uh, so it, if there's one thing that really taught me the value of being a human being was being a dad. Yeah. And, and not just being a dad biologically, but being, being a great father. Mm -hmm. And I had the honour of bringing my daughter up single-handedly which were very challenging times. Many nights crying, because I was lonely, because I was poor, because my daughter was poorly. But wow, what a wonderful benefit now. Yeah, yeah. At the heart of what you've been, been saying um, is, the, is the power of recognition. Children um, need it to, to grow. But, but it's, it's a lesson that we we forget because recognition uh, once we grow up and and how we use recognition is so incredibly powerful um, and, and influences the way people interface yeah. with us yeah because you see inside we interpret recognition as a sense you care you love yeah that's all we need yeah somebody says well done mm -hmm. it means a hell of a lot and somebody pays you a compliment you look fabulous today and you say it genuinely it means a hell of a lot mm. you know most of the great things are free and, and so recognition, reward, yeah, they work, 
because it tells us we're liked. Yeah. Um, and I guess consciously one has to try not to make rewards purely money because they're not as they're not valuable. No. Money doesn't have any value. You time and time again, I ask people, "What do you want? Do I want to be a millionaire? I'm not bothered about being a millionaire." That's what they say. I'm not bothered about being a millionaire. What they're bothered about is having a good, comfortable time, being happy. Yeah. And, and therefore, it's not about money, it's about values. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got, you know, if every single person ever just said, today, I'm going to go and genuinely find someone to give them a compliment to. And today, genuinely, I'm going to stand back before I prejudge. Yeah. And today, just, just today, every day, but right now, I'm going to find five minutes to ring someone and say, hi. I am spoken for a while. The world would be such a beautiful place. Yeah. Three simple things. Yeah. Yeah. Recognition then, is, is one of those keys to um, creating the environment around us yeah. that, that we want. What are the other keys? Um, I think giving and sharing and being open. Because uh, we've got a competition, competitive mindset in the world which breeds a scarcity mindset. There isn't a shortage. You know, people are short of money. There isn't a shortage of money. There, there's a mindset that says, I'm going to ring fence it. And if, of course, if you ring fence anything, if you keep something in, mm -hmm. stopping it going out, mm -hmm. then you're equally stopping stuff coming in. Yeah, yeah. So to have a ring fence mindset, it's just insane. It's just, it's just deliberately counterproductive. The only way you can ever let stuff flow in is if you let stuff flow out. So this whole mindset of scarcity and protection and competition is counterproductive. And, and if I've got a mission, it's to wake people up, come on. You, you get nowhere by being competitive and saying, that's mine and I'm not going to tell you this. As soon as you open up, say, yeah, of course I'll help you. Yeah, of course you can have it. What I've got is yours. Mi casa, tu casa. Yeah, yeah. And... Um you know, th through your through your career, you've developed a great um, skill around the whole area of sales. But but you've used that, and, and you've built on the, the the knowledge that you've learned there to take you in a in a in a new direction. Yeah, you know, I'm very proud to be a professional salesperson. I love selling as a skill, and and I in in my books I've written that selling is a life skill, not just a commercial get business skill. But, if there's a but, it's quite a big one, particularly in the UK, there's a negative concept to selling because we've got this brain pattern or this, this past history that says, I was sold something that was a rip-off. Actually, when you're sold something, i.e. the concept of going to a film that's brilliant, you go, oh, I'm so glad you told me about the film. When you're sold something, i.e. the concept of going to a great club and you have a brilliant night, you say, oh, I'm so glad you took me there. When you're sold something and it's that, idea about going to a new holiday destination and you get there and it's brilliant, you're so glad you were sold. And so to take selling, what I do when I'm training sales is to, to differentiate and understand it correctly. Selling is getting you to feel a certain way. Now it, selling is about a cause. Selling is about a faith. Selling is about you know, a belief, a, a racial thing or a poverty thing. It's, 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 a, it's a getting you to feel a certain way. It's not just about buying a product that might rip you off. So to frame that is, is critical, but it's a life skill. And you know, if it's, you see, that's the thing. If selling is done from the heart, if people give you something that's of value and they do it in an open way, we're all glad we were given it. It's, as you say, culturally in the UK, it doesn't sit comfortably with us as a, as a, as a process. Well, I, was, I mean, I was brought up in the era, as I'm sure a lot of people were, I brought up with the era of a, a rep in a Cortina, and you know, my father and my mother's uh, stereotypical view of a rep being a derogatory, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're the ones that flash past you, drive carelessly and slam in and park and don't care, you know, and so that, that negative take mm -hmm. it was there as I was a child, but um, uh, as I've evolved, as I was grown through life, I realised the power that actually everything is a sale, and in fact, politicians and religion uh, the two biggest sales, and you know that people are so swayed by them over centuries that, that they almost don't examine its validity. They just, and that's wrong. Yeah. 
It's, but it's about sharing something that you're passionate about. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and you know, enth enthusiasm. They say that uh, if you're on fire with enthusiasm, people will travel for miles to watch you burn. Yes, yeah. lovely phrase. <laughs> but, um, you know, so many people are not enthusiastic. And, uh, don't get out of bed then. Mm. You know, don't go out your door. You know, um, one of my low times in my life, I, a brilliant book, how to win friends and influence people and it's almost you know people people don't because it's not modern they don't value it it's so valuable yeah. but i have i had um, all around my flat in the early days just to sort of reprogram this computer i had these little stick it notes and one of them was a man a chinese proverb man without smile must not open shop and it was just it was on the back of my door as i opened my door to go out into the world that day i had this man without smile must not open shop so I open the door and I put my smile on. Yeah. And then another great lesson from that book was, you know, just smile and say hello. It changes the world. So I'd walk down the street on the way to work and say hello. Mm -hmm. and, and just they smile back. Yeah. And you just change because you change you. You change everything. Yeah. And then, of course, people, people assume you're a happy person. They deal with you in a happy way. Yes. It's a phenomenon. It's, and, it, and it's no secret. And it's yeah. so simple. Yeah. And it's, it's the one thing that, um, you know, attitude controls everything. Yeah. And uh, people don't realise that the attitude that they g give to any given situation is a choice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you and I can react or act, and um, but but it's having that it's having that conscious awareness that says, "Hold on, that's just happened." And in a nanosecond, what could I do? I could do this. I could do this. I could stand back and pause. And it's that conscious mind awareness which I'm trying hard to just help people with because I know the value yeah. of being able to stand back before you react. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Jim Rowan's set of the sails, isn't it? So the same winds blow on everybody. Yeah. But it's not the wind, it's the set of your sails, your personal philosophy, yes. how you harness that energy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Great. Yeah. Jim Rowan, what a great man. Absolutely. But you know, we keep coming back to these, uh, and, and I'm avid learner. I love reading. <laughs> Good job that some of us learn a lot from books, eh, Chris? But, you know, the truth is, if there's a, if there's a habit out there that I'd encourage, read. Go read. And I don't mean all your books have got to be um, sort of brain trained. Some, you know, I, every now and then, read light books for entertainment. But I, but I have a discipline that says, come on, learn, improve. And, you know, if just one person read one book every month, their life would improve. You're moving in, in a new direction now with, um, with, with uh, a course you're developing. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, how, how does that sit with that? Well, you know, Chris, for many years as a salesperson, being known for selling, being on stage teaching business, I'm so proud of that and honoured because I can, if someone's in business, I know I can help them. But what I was at pains to point out was there's more to business than just the money. And, and you know, when you've got no money, you sit there and think, oh, I'd be all right if it wasn't for this. If it wasn't for this, I'd be all right. And so I started out my career and saying, right, okay, well, it's not this, but I'll fix this, and then we're okay. And so, you know, a business owner would say, well, I'll be all right if I've got more money. Why haven't you got more money? I've got no sales. Okay, let me grow your sales, improve your marketing, get more money, everything's cool. And that gave me a chance to work with the person. And then by loving that person, helping them to open their mind, helping them to run their business a slightly different way, um, we got massive results, brilliant results. I still love doing that. But what I'm trying to do is shift people from a consciousness of money to a consciousness of heart. So taking business out of here into here. Because you know what I found, Chris? When you and I, or anybody, when we're sat in a situation and there's a, there's a potential question raised, shall I do this, shall I not? In, in, a, in a nanosecond, instinctively, we know what we should. Now, it's perhaps wrong to go shoulds and musts and woulds and couldn'ts and stuff. But, you know, inside, we've got a voice. We don't actually need other people to tell us the rules. We were born with the rules. The rule, the golden rule, what is the golden rule? Do unto others. You know, if we constantly say, would I sell this to my mum? Do I, you know, could I put my heart and soul behind this and, and stand up and know they're not going to come back to me crying? Do I, do I really want to give a guarantee? I mean, one of the big things I've always pushed businesses, give a guarantee. And then they go, oh, I can't give a guarantee. So if you can't guarantee it, why do you want to sell it? 
Why should somebody else? How can you have an ethical business if someone's got a risk? Now, I know there's no guarantees in life, but the principle is, uh, to the, every power within me, I'm going to make sure that it's right for you. And that's the golden rule. I don't want to buy something that's a duffer. I don't want to work with someone that lets me down. I don't, I don't want to buy into a program that then doesn't deliver its promises. So how could I ever be party to selling a program that wasn't delivering its promises? How could I ever encourage a business to grow just because it had a great sales letter? And, and you know, inside every one of us, we have that awareness, but we think. And what I'm trying to do with this new program is shift and say, come on, out of the head into the heart. Stand back, slow down, feel it. Because you know what? When you feel it, you always get it right. Yeah. And of course, what, what, um, what works for you as a person is reflected then in your business and the relationships that you, uh, you grow around you and the success of your business. You know, you've been into business as we all have. We go in and it feels right or it doesn't feel right. And you know, great businesses are built around great leaders. Some great businesses in size are built by whips and sticks and rods. But they're not great, because you go inside and everyone's moaning, and everyone can't wait to leave. And there's not a conducive atmosphere to creativity, to progress. Um, but some cultures, they're all working together long after the bell. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, every one of us, we have different levels of life, where we want to be. It's not, it doesn't reflect on how good we are. We're all equal. We're all lovable human beings. We've all got value to contribute. Uh, and the, the job, is to create the environment where the contribution is able to be given. They say that you can judge uh, people by the company they keep. Yes. I believe you can judge a company by the people they keep. That's a very, very, I love that. You're absolutely right, yeah. Yeah, I totally endorse that. And, and it, it, my mission now, new program shift, is just to say, keep the people that have got ethics. Keep the company delivering more than it promises. Deliver to clients so that the clients say thank you, not just what you said in your contract. You know, I'm urging people, contract, you don't need contracts. You know, if you're honest, if you're honest, you do not need a contract. And if you're going to lie, you'll lie in a contract. Yeah, yeah. Ben, that's been fantastic. Thank you, Chris. A pleasure.